Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm going back to the roots of how I used to do videos for a short period of time just to test it, see how things go, uh, because I've been noticing some changes in the uh, in the reception that I'm getting from uh, videos. The way I used to do videos all the way up until like October of last year was I did single games per video, I did live commentary, I talked in depth about the plays I was trying to make, the things that were affecting the play lines and stuff like that, and people really liked those. Now, I don't know why I naturally just kind of gravitated away from it. I did multiple uploads per day uh, for gameplay videos when I did do those things, uh, so I'm going to go back to doing that and see if it's something that uh, that is well received because I've been noticing a drop off as far as uh, as far as just people like liking my content um, as far as like compared to how it was previously when I did single games with live commentary. Um, so. This is just a test. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below of if you like live like gameplay uh, and if you like the singles uh, format because I really can't really just live commentate a match very effectively uh, because of the fact that um, that it's just so long and that when I'm trying to play it, I'm trying to focus on gameplay as well and it, my focus just breaks down very quickly over time uh, past the first game usually. I'm able to focus on like one game if it's a short term thing. But if I'm trying to focus on an entire match, it gets, it gets really difficult. And that's why I strayed away from it when I started doing multiple dual video games. But So let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comments down below after this video. But the purpose of this video is to play with Harpy's Featherstorm, the newest card that has been spoiled as Harpy's support. And this card is actually just fantastic. This is a trap card that says if you control a wind wing beast type monster, negate any monster effects your opponent activates this turn. So it negates all monster effects anywhere and if you control a harpy monster you can activate this card from your hand so essentially it becomes a hand trap and that's something that's very valuable uh, specifically in this deck as well because it's a card that's good going first and second because specifically against like our current format with like zodiac dryden with things like abc dragon buster with cards that remove things from the playing field in some form of capacity you'd be able to normal summon your harpy channeler or your harpy whatever going second and then you'd be able to Harpy's Featherstorm from hand to negate their Zodiac Dridents, negate their uh, ABC Dragon Busters, negate whatever monster they're trying to use as a form of removal on your monster to get your plays moving. And this deck naturally just fares really well against back row when you're able to stick Hunting Ground. Uh, but this list is an experimental list. I'm playing Ties of the Brethren with a Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds. I'm not sure if I like this or not. Um, in, the few t in the few games that I've tested with this deck, uh, when you're able to resolve ties, it is usually really like game impactful and game breaking because you're usually able to get Barrier Statue of the Storm Winds and you're backing it up with one of these 13 traps. Specifically something like Icarus Attack or Strike or uh, or something of that manner to like protect it, but it may be cut, it may come out. Uh, there's multiple different things that could easily uh, affect how this deck list changes going on forward. But uh, this is a deck that I wanted to try out specifically because I like how good of a card Harpy's Feather Storm is. This card is fantastic. Um, and the Harpy deck itself just has a really weird like focus on how it like operates, especially since it's gotten Harpy Harpist to be another consistency enabler, as well as a combo card. Uh, overall, there's just tons of things that have made me want to play this deck again and uh, at least give it a shot, because I mean it's got access to some broken support cards. Like Hysteric Sign is literally like a spellbook of judgment, Hysteric Party is basically Return from the Different Dimension, uh, like Harpy Channeler is a themed summoner monk that can go into rank 7s. Like there's a, there's so many good things that this deck has going for it as far as theory on paper, but Harpy's Feather Storm just, in my opinion, just adds just another layer of things that can make this deck good if it wasn't like as slow as it is. But I just wanted to test the deck out for a video and basically let's just uh, let's see what we see and uh, let's see what we think. And But also let me know what you think about the uh, live commentary single game format. Uh, that I used to do on my channel literally up until like last September, October area. Um, and I'm going to be trying to bring it back now with multiple daily uploads of dual videos. Just because it seems like it's easier to digest for people. People seem to like it better. People responded better to it. Uh, and overall, I'm just trying it out to see if that's something that I might want to go back into doing. But anyway, enough talking, enough yip yap and all that sort of nonsense. Let's just jump straight into the game and see what this deck's capable of doing uh, with Featherstorm, shall we? Alright, so let's see how this actually functions and how this goes, because I'm actually just really curious as to how this is going to work. Now, okay, there's Featherstorm, which is good. I've got Summoner Monk plus Instant Fusion, which I could go into Channeler, um, and then go into, uh, I could go into Channeler, and then go into Harpist, and I could leave Harpist, or the Channeler, on the board for the Featherstorm. That seems pretty alright. Getting rid of this instant fusion doesn't seem like it's the biggest issue. Now, I play this one barrier statue, and it's apparently just a brick. Just immediately, immediately bricking my hand uh, to some degree. 
Uh, I wish that this instant fusion had been hysteric sign. That would have been like the spice. But as it stands, I think I'm fine with this. Now, I don't have any real defensive monsters here in my extra deck now that I uh, now that I recall. So this is going to be rather interesting. I might just like literally just do cowboy and get rid of harvest to fucking burn for eight. That might actually just be the play. I'd need to put something like giant hand or something in here because that would have been great uh, to put this under. But as it stands, it's literally just uh, it's literally just going to be under here doing like nothing. Unless I just you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna act as if he's playing something that's in uh, a grave oriented deck, and I'm just going to make the dweller because. Um, oh man, I didn't even need to make the Dweller because I've got this that negates all the monster effects, period. That's right, this doesn't negate effects strictly on board. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just do this, uh, just because, like, if I can get away with not using this Featherstorm, then I will. Now, I've got this Channeler on the board, uh, which means this Featherstorm can be activated from my hand. Um, now, th there's argument for setting it, but at the same time, we do not have access to, um to, uh, whatchamacallit, to, uh, Harpy's Feather Duster in the TCG. So its grave effect will never resolve for us currently. Now, uh, that's a Terra Top, so straight off the rip, he's doing something either zoo-oriented or BA-oriented, and it's Canadian Courage, so I expect it to be BA Zoo, um, half the time that we play. Uh, so that's also just another point as to why I could have made this Dweller. Uh, but... So from here, I'm going to be able to use Harpist to search in the end phase for a card that I can strictly use to discard for Channeler. Um, I'm not going to be able to add another Harpist, I don't believe. I think it has to be 1500 attack. Okay, so he's playing... Okay, there's Phantom Knights, which means that this is likely like PK Fire. Uh, something like that. Which I'm completely fine with. Uh, this negates everything, period. Um, the, feather, the Feather Storm is such a strong card. Like, <laughs> I cannot believe how strong the card is, and he has to get the Dweller off the board, because otherwise it's just going to uh, amalgamate into more advantage for me further on down the line, so that's that's perfectly agreeable. But yeah, Featherstorm is such a good card, I'm just I'm a bit upset that it's the only trap that I drew, and he's setting three, so I literally have to, let's see, I could use Harpist to not search for Queen, because it's too big, all I can search for are Channelers and Harpy Lady 1s, so I'm just going to search for a Harpy Lady 1 to, uh, to discard off the Channeler. Uh, this this wasn't an optimal opening. I play like 13 traps and I drew one of them. Like, come on now. I play like 12 to 13 traps. I drew one. That's kind of irritating if we uh, if we're being completely real. But uh, so from what I can do here, I can activate this. I'm just gonna activate this, discarding the Harpy Lady one. Right. I'm gonna try and do a Harpy Lady uh, sis, uh, Harpy Lady pet dragon thing play. Okay, that's. That's a bit of an irritant, because that means that now this is going to be able to just answer the barrier statue. I was really wanting to make, like, Draco Sack and uh, be able to do that. So, like, this this is not a good situation for me in the slightest uh, for, like, how this is going to be functioning and going. Which sucks, because, like I said, I could have opened traps. Now, this could just easily be cut from the deck. I'm not really too, like, sure whether or not I even like it or not. I've just seen people running it with the Ties of the Brethren nonsense, and I mean, in theory, Ties of the Brethren is a really cool card that you can use, uh, but also at the same time, it just seems kind of, I guess, irrelevant is the thing that I'm uh, that I'm going to be talking about, because like, you could Ties of the Brethren on like Channeler or any of your other Harpies, get Harpy Dancer and this, and then use Harpy Dancer to bounce like your Channeler or something to your hand to protect it, uh, and then you've got a Barrier Statue on the board, but then like, it's just still like, You've got to be able to have traps to back that up, and this just seems like it's a brick that's probably not going to be in my deck. It might be a side deck card, uh, very much so. It might be a card that just ends up in the side deck. Uh, but as for right now, it's just not seeming like it's something that's main deck worthy, because this deck specifically has a lot of cards already that kind of mismatch with each other. You don't want to draw. I mean, you've already got Harpy's Pet Dragon that you never want to see in your hand. You've got a couple other cards. Uh, Elegant Egotist, you can search that. You don't want to draw it. Um, I mean, if you draw it, you do have applications with it, but you do not want to draw it. Uh, there's there's a few different cards like that that you just don't want to have clumping your hand. Uh, specifically, things like Harpist as well. Like Harpist, you want to draw it with Channeler or not at all. Uh, and this is just one of those cards that you just, I guess, just never want to really see. Now, see now, I'm in this situation now where I've literally got nothing I can actually do about this situation, 
and I'm going to just lose handily because of it. Um, so, that's a problem, but we, we take these. We take these as results, right? Uh, we take these as results, and we uh, take them for what they are. Now, I'm definitely going to be playing with this deck again, and uh, like I said in the intro, I'm testing out the old format of video that I used to do, which was live commentary singles, because that seems to be what people like the most when I go back and look at all of the stuff, and far, as far as like audience engagement and stuff like that, it seems to be what was uh, what was liked the most of what I did. And ever since I stopped doing that and went to post dual commentary and stuff like that, I've been noticing a consistent drop off in like people liking things, people commenting on things, people watching things. I've noticed this. I've noticed this trend. All my numbers have taken a little bit of a downturn, and so it seems like that's what my channel was built on was the live singles. Which are, you know, easy to digest games. They don't just fly by at the drop of a hat like the replay games do. Uh, and uh, it's easier to follow because I can actually discuss things. But at the moment, I'm literally just getting uh, beat on. Um, I don't think I've seen a BA card this entire game. So I'm just going to assume this is just like pure Phantom Knights. But luckily for me, I have this person in my Discord chat. So I'm able to actually go and ask him exactly what he was playing for the title of this video. So that little conundrum of the of days gone by of not knowing what I was playing against specifically is definitely not something that uh, is a problem anymore. But I'm definitely going to play this deck for another video uh, because that was just a very subpar, very poor opening. I'm probably going to make a few changes to the deck like taking out the Ties of the Brethren and the Barrier Statue and then just testing it again overall. Just implementing better like overall cards like maybe Pot of Desires and things like that just to give the deck a little bit more of a leg to stand on because if you draw these cards in mismatched quantities and stuff like that then it starts becoming a problem and that's not something you want to be dealing with now like I said I have like 12 13 traps in this list and I only drew one of them but it was the one that I wanted to showcase in the video and Harpy's Featherstorm is such a really strong card but ultimately it just it wasn't like as good as it needed to be it wasn't as optimal as it could have been now uh, the Summoner Monk was alright, uh, the problem being was the fact that I didn't draw any other trap to back it up. Like, if I had drawn other traps, I would have not had to rely on that Feather Storm, and I would have been able to commit my board in a different way. Like, making something like Draco Sack or something like that um, with the uh, Harpy Channeler and then leaving the Summoner Monk out, or doing something like that. There definitely needs to be a defensive rank 4 in my extra deck, though. I can't believe I just had the oversight of that. Uh, that was just an oversight that I just actually completely forgot about, is that I could play something like uh, Rafflesia, or I could play something like Giant Hand, and that would just be really good. So I can't believe I actually forgot about that. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Again, I'm going to be playing another game with Harpies, and it'll probably be up later today, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But other than that, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon. I haven't decided what I'm giving away this month yet, uh, but I usually give away a significant amount of Konami products just as a way to say thanks to the people that support me so definitely go check that out if you're interested it also gets you access into my discord server which is where Canadian Courage came from and where a bunch of other people are that currently hang out and talk with me on a daily basis and play for these videos so if you're interested in that then check that out as well but if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website which is also linked in the description they are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and I'm a big fan of how they do business definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you if you're looking to acquire any cards that you saw in my videos but other than that that is it for this video as I've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care I'll see you in the next video